Welcome to The Milk Making Minutes. I'm your host, Lo Nigrash. Today I'm trying something new, and I'm recording myself on video so that people who prefer to watch their podcast episodes can do so. I'm still not quite ready to ask my guests to show up on video because so many of them are busy moms who don't want to worry about what they look like. But as you can see, I don't really care. (laughs) It's late at night. My kids are sleeping. The video quality is a little bit dark, but that's okay. I prefer to show up imperfectly and show up than to not show up at all. So this week, we are going to be talking about the age-old question, what can I eat and drink to increase my supply? I'm really excited to be talking about this because it's a question I hear all the time. So let's get into it. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having known only a handful of people who had ever breastfed and only seeing it up close from a couple of them, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a lactation consultant, and a childbirth educator. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to the Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding experiences through the lens of systemic barriers so that you know your breastfeeding struggles are not your fault and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. I want to preface my response to this question by saying every culture has foods designated for the postpartum period to increase milk that breastfeeding mothers are supposed to be eating. And so when I give my responses, I don't give them lightly or frivolously, and I'm not trying to put anyone down. In the United States, the standard answers that we hear to this question are that you should eat oatmeal, that you should make sure to add brewer's yeast to your diet, that drinking beer especially dark beer, can improve your milk output, that drinking lots of water, coconut water, will increase your milk output, that drinking blue Gatorade will increase your milk output. And then, of course, there are standard herbal galactagogues. Uh, Galactagogues are food and drink that are thought to increase milk output. So some people recommend fenugreek, for example. However, there is not a lot of evidence to indicate that any certain food increases or decreases your milk supply. If you listened to last week's solo episode where I talked about how to increase your pumping output, I talked about how milk output is based on hormones. So I'm going to say this again and again. Milk output is based on what's happening hormonally in your body. And you can impact those hormones by what you do at your breast and by how frequently you breastfeed. But there is no real solid evidence to indicate that you can eat any type of food or drink any certain drink, and it will increase your milk output. Now, I always tell people, if you would like to add lactation cookies into your diet, and that makes you feel good, great, do it. If you like oatmeal and would like to eat oatmeal every day in the hopes that it increases your milk supply, great, do it. If drinking blue Gatorade will give you the extra push you need to continue pumping and breastfeeding your baby to provide as much breast milk as you can for your baby, by all means, drink the blue Gatorade. If you would like to eat oatmeal pies (laughs) instead of oatmeal in hopes that increases your supply, do it. That's fine. Just know that if you were or are from India, the advice you would be getting about foods you should be eating would be very different. If you were or are 
from China or Japan, the advice you would be getting would be very different. If you were from Mexico, the advice you would be getting from family members and friends would be very different because there is no real standard solid evidence about the foods you should be eating. So what does this mean? We do know that the caloric demands for a person breastfeeding do increase by about 500 calories a day. So it is important to get enough food and to drink to satisfaction. Many people report feeling particularly thirsty while breastfeeding. So go ahead and make sure you're drinking. I always like to tell people in the beginning that if they set up a pumping station that has plenty of snacks and their favorite drinks, if you like to drink seltzer, make sure you have a cooler with some ice and some seltzer cans there so that you can always have that on hand at the place where you typically like to pump and that there's a basket filled with some of your favorite snacks so that it's available to you when you like to pump. And that will allow you to be satisfied, to not feel like you're missing out. That will get the oxytocin flowing, which is really important for milk supply. And it will create an environment which is conducive to pumping. And then you'll make sure that your caloric and hydration needs are met. But there really is no need to eat or drink something in particular. Do you love to read about pregnancy, childbirth, and breastfeeding? Are you looking for books to help you become a more confident parent? or perhaps books to help you understand what went wrong with your breastfeeding journey or to do better next time with breastfeeding? Or do your kids have questions about breastfeeding or pregnancy, but you don't really know how to answer them? Would you prefer to have a curated list on these topics? Go to the link in the show notes to my new affiliated bookshop. Every purchase you make benefits the Milk Making Minutes. But better than that, these books are vetted. I've read them all and I feel very confident recommending them to you. I'll be adding to them continuously, so go to that link when you want to purchase a book. It will help the show, and you can feel confident it will be a purchase you will enjoy. So that still begs the question, what do you do? If you have a newborn and you are worried about milk supply, the best thing that you can do is to learn your baby's feeding cues. Now, babies have many of the same feeding cues, and you want to learn what your baby's earliest feeding cues are, because sometimes babies will get so hungry, will miss their early feeding cues, and then they're much harder to feed because they have trouble latching when they're so hungry that they're hangry, that they get frustrated and they cry. So some of those early feeding cues are in that quiet alert state when their eyes start to open, they start looking around, they start putting that hand to their mouth, they start opening their mouth and looking around. Those are all signs that the infant is getting ready to feed. One note about this, those mittens that you put on infants' hands to keep them from scratching themselves are not the best idea when you're trying to protect your own milk supply because A, babies can't do some of those instinctual behaviors which signal that they're hungry, like putting the hand in the mouth. B, babies use their hands to create that hormonal interaction between mom and baby and they use their hands to massage baby and having that skin to skin hand to breast is really important during breastfeeding to create the hormonal response that you want between the person feeding the baby and the baby so take those mittens off the baby cut the nails while baby is sleeping or some people chew the nails off so that you can make sure to have a robust milk supply that's one of the ways to do that so know your baby's infant early feeding cues. Don't put mittens on your baby's hands. Allow them to touch their own mouths with their hands and to touch your skin with their hands. And then you want to be nursing and pumping around the clock frequently. And we often hear the advice to feed every two to three hours. This is a, like at most, 
feed every two to three hours. If you're going longer than two to three hours at a stretch with a newborn, you're probably going too long and you are not signaling your body to make enough milk. And then your body will downregulate over time. So in the beginning, it might be every hour that you're feeding. It might be every 30 minutes that you're feeding. You might have some cluster feeds where the baby just wants to nurse for hours on end. This is normal infant behavior. The baby instinctually is trying to preserve your milk supply and getting the milk flowing. So pay attention to the baby. Do not pay attention to the clock. If you're experiencing any pain, if the baby tends to be frustrated at the breast, if it seems like the baby cannot get enough breast tissue in the breast, no matter how many times you try to latch and relatch, you should see a lactation consultant because it means that there might be something going on and anatomically inside of the baby's mouth that is preventing that good latch. So you're going to pay attention to the earliest feeding cues. You're going to nurse around the clock and you are going to ignore any advice that tells you not to allow comfort nursing. Anyone who tells you don't let the baby use you as a pacifier is wrong. Now, as your baby gets older and your milk supply is already established, fine. You know, you can use a pacifier instead. But in those early weeks when you are trying to establish your milk supply, like for you know, for the first six to 12 weeks, you really do want the baby to comfort nurse at the breast because that is creating that hormonal response that I talked about last week. It's signaling your body to anytime baby comes to the breast or anytime a breast pump is used, prolactin flows through the bloodstream and that is the signal for your body to make more milk. And so every time that prolactin flows through when there's high level prolactin in the bloodstream, more milk is going to be made. And so comfort nursing, even though people say, oh, baby's not hungry, baby's just comfort nursing, that serves a purpose. It serves to create a robust milk supply. So those are my top tips for ensuring that you have a great milk supply. I would love to know yours. Join me in the Milk Making Minutes community group on Facebook. We have a growing community of people there who want to discuss all of the forces which make breastfeeding difficult and try to remove those barriers so that it's not as hard anymore. It shouldn't be as hard as it is. We shouldn't have as much anxiety as we do, but we do. And it's not our fault. This has been done to us and we are trying to change that narrative. So join me over there and we can have those discussions.